Hello everyone and uh, welcome to re-entry. In this video I will be going through the entry monitoring system uh, entry tests uh, procedures. Uh, the EMS entry test is uh, basically a part of the entry preparation uh, checklists for both uh, Earth uh, orbit and uh, lunar orbit entry. So I'm currently on a lunar trajectory, which means that I will hit the atmosphere with a velocity of about 36,300 feet per second at uh, the entry interface. So um, I'm going to go into the lunar return vehicle preparation checklist. And if you scroll down into kind of the first uh, proper section, uh, we'll, you will find the EMS entry test. Uh, to uh, take a closer look at the EMS, you will need to skip, uh, jump into the cockpit itself, and you will find it on the top of MDC-1. It's kind of this big panel here, and contains uh, a lot of different functions. In the previous video, I went through some of this, uh, but right now I'm just going to focus on the entry aspects and the tests related to entry. So. Um, if you don't know the EMS yet, uh, it might seem a little bit frightening, but the biggest part of it is the center uh, window, which uh, got uh, uh, some text on it, uh, an orange line in the middle, and then some patterns. And this one uh, will be used during entry and during testing. Uh, during entry, this pattern will scroll towards left, and there's a needle behind this orange line that will move up and down based on your current uh, g-forces. So if you're at 0g, uh, the needle will be up here, and if you're at 9g, the needle will be all the way down here. And these lines can then be used to monitor your tests, and there are some other lines that can be used to monitor your entry trajectory as well. Uh, there's a couple of other interesting things for entry. Uh, this RSI needle uh, will show you your current lift vector. So given your current role, uh, you will be having an, a, a lift. And I'll just quickly separate from the CSM here. I'm not following any correct procedures because I'm just going to do the actual tests. There we go, uh, a dirty separation. But now you can see that I am on my own. And uh, if you take a look at the capsule, you will see that the heat shield blow it. And let me just also rotate just to... Um, to really show you. What I'm talking about. Just roll this in uh, a retrograde attitude. There we go. Okay, so now I'm heading towards Earth. And you can see that the capsule, the heat shield here, is in this uh, circular form. So, um, this part here is uh, your view, uh, windows of the uh, commander and the, the crew itself. And then you have the optic side here. The optic sides is basically where your feet are located. So if I skip inside of the capsule, you can see that the optics is, is down here, kind of the, on the bottom of the capsule, while your windows and the hatch is on your up or relative to your head. And this is quite important to remember because during entry, you will dive into the atmosphere and the command module has been designed to function a little bit like a wing uh, as it uh, uh, enters kind of the denser part of the atmosphere so you can produce a, a lift vector. So the center of gravity uh, got an offset so that the stable attitude, this one will 
kind of try to maintain during atmosphere uh, entry uh, will have a slight offset. So once you enter the atmosphere, the air will kind of move towards this and go uh, equally to each side if there would be um, uh, no tilt. So basically if the center of gravity would be in the middle. But since this center of gravity is shifted a little bit, the air will kind of hit the heat shield on the side and then go on uh, towards kind of this uh, side of the command module here. And that produces a lift vector. And the lift vector is typically uh, going along the direction of your feet. So if you're looking at Earth and the Earth is above you, which means that you are upside down as you enter, the lift vector will be going up uh, from Earth. So basically up into the air. This will uh, kind of uh, create the tra trajectory and reduce your uh, vertical speed and then eventually even start to make you climb out of the atmosphere. So you will need to make sure that this lift vector is controlled so that you don't skip out of the atmosphere uh, at the wrong time. Some skip out is uh, uh, required and some uh, skip outs are desired in terms of how far you want the range to your splashdown location to be. So this uh, lift vector can then be used to decide when you should skip out and also control your g-forces. Uh, if you roll the spacecraft so your heads are up, which means your ground is below you, so you're sitting in kind of a normal heads up position with your earth below you, like in a normal airplane, then the lift vector is pointing down and you will dive into the atmosphere. And this will get you through the denser part of the atmosphere faster and will make you dive into it faster, which also increases your G load. Uh, so the lift vector uh, can directly be used to change how your G forces works. So it's important to pay attention to this RSI needle during entry. And there's uh, uh, an important detail, and that's uh, that this RSI needle is coupled with the GDC. So you will need to make sure that the GDC is properly aligned with the IMU before entry. Uh, if not, you should not trust this needle. So always verify that during entry. It will show you the wrong lift direction if that's not properly set up. So, there's a couple of other displays here. 0.5G will illuminate once you hit the upper part of the atmosphere, typically 10 seconds after uh, uh, the entry interface, which is about 400,000 feet of altitude. And then you have the SPS thrust light, which will be on uh, during SPS burns. Then you have a delta V and the range monitor here, which will vary depending on what function you hear. In some of these functions, it will be uh, showing you the, your delta V uh, changes or remaining delta V or uh, uh, remaining range to, for example, the splashdown location. So now that we've been going through some of the main things of this panel, uh, we can start working with the EMS entry tests. Since we are currently in orbit, the ground testing switch should always be down. And there's a, uh, usually a cover here, which I haven't yet modeled, uh, that should be protecting the switch. So always keep this one down if you're in orbit. If you're uh, performing ground tests, uh, like I've done in other, another video, then this switch should be up to GTA to simulate uh, kind of the zero G. Anyway, this one is down. So. First of all, make sure that the EMS switch is set to off and that the two EMS um, cir circuit breakers are closed. These two here, that's MNA and NMAB, which powers the EMS. And then uh, the mode switch is set to standby. So this is the function switch and this is the mode switch. So the first thing that we uh, uh, need to do is to set the EMS test to one. And if I left click this uh, selector, it will kind of move in this direction and right clicking will make it move in the other direction. Um, then I will need to wait five seconds and I can use the event timer here to uh, keep uh, track of time. And then I will set this one to 
normal and this will start the actual test and uh, most of the tests in one is just to reset everything and prepare for the other tests and it takes about 10 seconds for each of these steps to execute uh, after 10 seconds um, all the lights should be out and uh, the range indicator should be zero and uh, the scroll here should be aligned with uh, the entry and the start of a pattern you can see that if i move this there's a lot of similar patterns going forward we'll use the first one for now and then uh, i'll set the ems mode to two this will ten take 10 seconds and after about 10 seconds the 0.05 g light should be on this is the light and all others should be out there we go uh, it's now on. Uh, the next test, that's EMS test 3, uh, 0.05G should remain on. The lift vector down light should uh, illuminate after about 10 seconds. And you can see that it's now on. Then lastly, it wants me to set the range indicator to 58 nautical miles. And remember that I set, said that the function selector here will... Uh, uh, choose what this uh, range which is doing and what this uh, delta v slash ems set switch is doing in test mode 3 it allows me to set the nautical miles and basically the range so uh, you can use the delta v increase to set this one and you can also hold down the middle mouse button and it goes faster if you hold it up or down and it wants me to set it to 58 nautical miles, 0 0.0. And then I can move to uh, test 4. And you can see that the uh, G-forces is now increasing. And uh, the uh, range indicator goes, uh, the scroll uh, goes towards the left as the range goes towards 0. So you can so you see that 0 0.5 G is on. Uh, we have the GB trace uh, following the pattern. Uh, after 10 seconds it should show a stop at this line here and uh, the range indicator should be about 0, 0.0 it's normal that uh, there might be some offsets here so 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 that's all, all fine uh, once that this test is complete I can set it to uh, 5 this will move the uh, vertical line up and the list vector up light should illuminate after about 10 seconds the range indicator should reset back to 0, 0.0 if it was an offset you would see that and uh, then we will need to move this uh, scroll all the way to skip all of the different tests patterns they are all similar to the 37,000 mark that's this line here and um, if you're performing these tests following this checklist, you can skip uh, tests 1, 2, 3, and 4, but always uh, perform test 5 before you kind of uh, prepare it for entry. Uh, step 5 is required before entry to make the EMS function properly. Alright, uh, I've now aligned it with the 37,000 feet per second line, and you can see that uh, the feet per second is going down uh, towards the right part of uh, the scroll, so you can see that it, it reduces. And this is something that we will need to uh, care about in uh, during re-entry. Um, okay, the next part is to set the range set. This will further uh, reset uh, the needle, and uh, I will uh, need to uh, set the delta v range on range set to uh, what I received from the pad or from the burn tool from the deorbiting on the range uh, r to go uh, data. That's the range to go from entry interface. Basically, when you set this to normal. Uh, after everything is configured and you start to hit the atmos atmosphere, this is the range until uh, you're splashing down. So to do that, um, we can just use the uh, thing here and I'll just set it to 1200 for now, just because uh, I, I don't have this data yet. 
Uh, that's something that you would get before you execute this. If I scroll up to the top of this checklist, you can see that uh, it requires you to request an entry pad. And to do that, you will need to be on an entry trajectory. Okay, so we now set the RT goal to 1,200 nautical miles. That means that once I hit the upper part of the atmosphere, there's 1,200 nautical miles to the planned splashdown location. Uh, next, I will need to set the uh, start uh, velocity. And that's um, uh, basically also what the pad is saying. Uh, typically for uh, Earth, it's about 25,500 feet per second. And I'll correct this number. And then for lunar entry, it's about 3,600, uh, 500 or 3,600 to 300 feet per second. That's all related to the pad. So then I'll uh, go ahead and uh, move uh, this scroll to that location. So for lunar entry, it will be somewhere here, 36,500. And for Earth entry, you will go all the way to this line here and align it here with about uh, 25,500 feet per second. Uh, if you're in Earth orbit, you will hit the atmosphere at a slower velocity than you will on a lunar trajectory. So I'll just go back to the correct alignment here. There we go. Then uh, we basically can set this one to, uh, of course, uh, to entry here in standby mode. But of course, uh, this reconfiguring will also take place at a later stage. Uh, the most important here is to perform the step one, two, three, four, and five, and then uh, leave it at range set. And typically what you would do is to go to one, two, three, four, and five. And once you're at the range set, uh, uh, range set then you just hit standby and leave it there and then you'll do all the configuring a little bit later uh, through this checklist so I just wanted to kind of show you how this works. so once you've done all the tests set the predicted uh, splash uh, range to splashdown and set the start initial velocity and set it to entry and keep it in standby once you hit the upper part of the atmosphere this will be set to normal and this will then start to, to function. That's it for this video. I'll create another video which will go through all of the uh, uh, setting this up correctly for entry and following uh, the procedures to actually perform an entry uh, in the command module. With that, thank you for watching and uh, have a good day.